What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. And if it's your first time here, extra special welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss one of these weekly videos so you can continue improving on your SQL knowledge every single week. And so this week I want to share something that really caught me by surprise more than anything else. As you'll see the solution isn't very complicated but the way SQL Server kind of handles this is just completely surprising to me so I thought this would be great to share with all of you. So last week I was trying to copy some data from production to development so that I had something a little bit more realistic to test with. While I was doing that I ran into a snag so let's take a look at an example of exactly what happened. So in this example I just have a user table right with an identity uh, ID column and a username, right? So every time we insert a username, we're gonna auto-generate an integer identity. So pretty straightforward there. We have four users, Jim, Jane, Jin, and Joyce. We're going with J's today. And then there's a second table called stupid questions. And you'll notice that the ID column on this table, which is also an identity, is a big int because I wanted to be sure that we had enough room in this table for all the stupid questions that exist. Um, obviously I'm anticipating a lot of them. And you'll see that there's a user ID that's tying us back to the users table. And there's no, no kind of foreign key relationships or anything that I created with that. Um, but I didn't want to overcomplicate things. So the important things to be aware of are the identity columns that we see. So I'll insert some data there. So now we have two tables in our production environment and we want to copy the data to dev. So um, for us, I'm just going to create those same two tables just with dev uh, added to the suffix of those table names. Uh, everything else about the tables is exactly the same. We still have our identity columns. And what we want to do now is to copy our data. So the way I thought I would do this was just a simple insert into uh, select. So I'm inserting into my user dev table and I'm selecting from my, you know, my production table. And obviously in a real world, I'd have these in different instances on different servers, um, but just for purposes of this demo, it's easier to have them in the same database. So um, same thing happening with stupid questions. I'm inserting into stupid questions dev for my production table. And if I go ahead and run these, you will notice I get an error message. And this error message, right, is saying an explicit value for the identity column in table user dev can only be specified with a column that is blah, 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 blah. Basically, I can't insert this data because of the identity column. So easy fix, right? Uh, you can override that uh, functionality and just allow for identity inserts. So I thought I would do that, right? That's not the main point of this video, uh, but this is, right? So I figured, okay, let me turn on identity inserts on my users table and my stupid questions table in dev, and I get another error message, right? This time the error message is saying my identity insert is already on for table user dev. I can't perform the same set operation for my stupid questions table. So this is what caught me by surprise, right? I can only insert into the identity columns one table at a time in SQL Server. So in this case where I was copying two tables of data, I can't set both tables to have identity insert on. I need to kind of do them one at a time. And this is kind of a pain, right? Since this is just data that I'm using to test with, I wasn't that concerned about like what happens if data gets inserted into one table and not the other. Could have set up, you know, a, a transaction to kind of make sure everything's committed all together and we don't kind of only load half the data. Um, but the solution to this, right, is probably pretty obvious, is to just set our identity insert on for our user table. Um, and then we'll insert our user data here. And now we'll see, you know, we successfully inserted all four rows and we turn off our identity insert on in our dev table. And then we set the identity insert on for our stupid uh, questions dev table. And then we can copy over all that data. And now that all works like I originally expected it would work. Like I said, the solution here, not that complicated. Uh, but the thing that kind of made me interested when I did this is that I forgot to turn identity inserts off, just like I did with this demo here. On my stupid questions dev table, I have identity inserts set to on, but because I never ran that off statement, it got me thinking, well, does that mean if I come back to this later, can I still insert it into my, you know, my identity column on that table? In a dev environment, right, it's once again, not a huge deal, but if I was doing this in production, if I had to fix some data or something, would this cause problems for me? And so I decided to test it out, right? Obviously now since it's on, if I just ran this again, it would insert successfully, I could run it multiple times, right, and it works fine. 
Uh, the thing is, right, what if I open this in a new session window or something like that, right? So if we go to new query and I'll paste that um, and I try to run it here, you'll see we once again get the error message saying we can't insert this data into uh, with identity inserts off. And so what this means is that this identity insert property on a table, right, which you could only have on one table at a time, only lasts for the session, right? If I jump back to my original window and try to insert, everything works fine. But now since I'm connected via a different session in this window, I get that error message. So luckily for me, as long as, right, I eventually disconnect this session, um, and then if I were to reconnect it, right, not a problem there, do, do, do. Let me just make sure I've got my correct database selected, right? If I try to run my insert again, no concerns there. I can't accidentally insert more data once that original session where identity insert on was set in. And that's it really, right? It's nothing really complicated, but it did catch me by surprise that you can only have a single table have the identity insert on property uh, on in a database at a time. It's also good to know that if I forget to turn off identity inserts, uh, that as long as I open a new connection window or my, you know, my session times out, I get disconnected, maybe my computer goes to sleep, uh, I'm not going to accidentally insert more data into that identity column because that, uh, that identity insert on setting only applies to the specific session where I turn it on. In. And so that's it. Thank you for sticking around through this one. If you found this useful, if this was surprising to you, you know, share it with a friend, share it with a coworker, right? If it's new to you, it's probably new to them. You can be the hero by teaching them how to do something new or teaching them how, you know, something works in SQL Server for the first time. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, if you're not already a subscriber, please be sure to subscribe and that way I will catch you next time. Thanks.